Emotions are what help us to remember things. For example, if someone laughs at you and makes you feel bad about not knowing a certain word, you can bet you'll remember that word in the future. The problem is, you can't manufacture emotional experiences for every word you want to learn on demand. Or can you? Well, to some degree, you can. If you use music. Hi, everybody, welcome to Sing and Learn Chinese. So, perhaps you've heard people say that using songs and music may be good for learning other languages like Spanish or French, etc., etc., but not Chinese. These people give reasons like Chinese is a tonal language, when you sing it, you lose all the tones. Or they might say Chinese lyrics aren't always written the way people talk. And yes, these reasons are real. But does that mean that you shouldn't use music to learn Chinese? Or that you'll be wasting your time if you try? Not on your life. Now, it's pretty obvious from our name that we use songs to learn Chinese. We're called sing and learn Chinese after all. But we have some very good reasons for using music to learn Chinese. Here are 13 of them. And stick around till the end because I have a little bonus tip to share with you all. Okay, reason number one, intrinsic motivation. Linguist Stephen Krashen once pointed out that the rare few people who are in love with grammar rules and language structures often end up becoming language teachers and textbook writers. The problem is the majority of us who learn languages after childhood are not in love with grammar rules and language structures. We didn't learn our first language by reading textbooks, memorizing massive lists of vocabulary, and taking pop quizzes. We learned our first language because we needed it to do things we wanted, like get our parents to feed us or keep our siblings from stealing our toys. In other words, language learning works better when it's intrinsically motivating. And I don't know about you, but listening to music and singing songs is much more intrinsically motivating for me than textbooks and rote memorization, wouldn't you say? Reason number two, non-annoying repetition. Okay, that said, unless you have the memory of a savant, you need to repeat things in order to learn them. But listening to the same words over and over and over again in the same boring monotone will put anyone to sleep. Very annoying, not very useful. However, when you use music and listen to songs, you get exposed to the same words over and over in a non-annoying way. Partly because you can hear certain words show up in multiple songs, and partly because when you really like a song, you have no problem putting it on loop and listening to it over and over. Just think about some of your favorite song choruses. How many times do those things repeat in a simple three-minute song? If you listen to a song that you like long enough, you'll memorize the chorus without even trying. That is the power of non-annoying repetition. Reason number three, pronunciation input. Chinese pronunciation isn't just tones, you know. There are several vowels and consonants that are quite tricky for non-native speakers to master. But it is doable. How? Again, repetition. And lots and lots of input. That's where Chinese songs come in. Since songs are intrinsically motivating, see reason number two, your brain pays more attention when you're listening to music. And as you're listening to your music, paying attention to the melodies and the ear candy and whatever else is in those songs, your subconscious brain will start to absorb the exact way that certain sounds are pronounced, rather than letting your conscious brain try to figure out how you think the sound is supposed to be pronounced, which is the biggest problem people have with pronunciation. The more you listen to Chinese music, the more you'll start to catch the difference between, say, the English wo and the Chinese wo, the English ren and the Chinese ren, and so on and so forth. Reason number four, small doable goals. Let's be real. Learning Chinese or any other language is not something you can do in a few weeks. If you want to learn it properly, you have to be ready to commit several years to the endeavor, if not your entire life. Sometimes the sheer immensity of the project can feel overwhelming, which is why you need to break up your learning process into a series of smaller goals so that you can feel yourself making progress and not get discouraged by how long the road is. Using songs to learn Chinese can help you with that. Most songs are only a few minutes long, even if you decided to go all out, handwrite all the lyrics, make flashcards, memorize how to sing the thing, it still won't take you that long. Especially when you have a resource like Sing and Learn Chinese to help explain the nuances behind the song lyrics. In other words, you won't feel overwhelmed when you break your Chinese learning sessions down into learning just one song at a time. Reason number five, rap music. If you really wanted to challenge yourself, you could take a look at rap songs. 
Not only because the powerful rhythms make it easier to drill lyrics into your head and give you a sense of how Chinese phrasing works, but also because rap singers, at least the interesting ones, often stuff tons of vocabulary into very little space. Let's say you learn about 20 new words when you learn a typical non-rap song. If you learned a rap song, that would be more like 100 words. Plus, rappers sometimes are at the forefront of Chinese slang. So if you want to know what the modern youngsters are chatting about, check out the rap section of your Chinese music playlist. Reason number six, choices. Music is everywhere, in every culture. Like stories, no one has to be taught to appreciate music. We're all born with a musical bone, which means that there are tons of people out there making music and writing songs all the time. So if you wanted to learn a particular word or listen to a particular style or genre of music in Chinese, you can definitely find it out there somewhere. When it comes to other types of content, you're limited by how many people have the creativity and determination and resources to write and produce books or movies or dramas. But music is virtually endless, especially now that any musically inclined budding Chinese songwriter can pick up a camera, pick up a recording device, write songs, and post them online for free. Long story short, you'll never run out of interesting new songs to learn from. Reason number seven, collocations. Just because you memorized a word doesn't mean you know how to use it. Linguists have this term called collocation to talk about words that go together versus words that don't. For example, in English you say, please turn on the light, or I'm going to take a bath, instead of please open the light, or I'm going to get a bath. In Chinese, there are phrases like this too, where you might use a word that technically makes sense, but sounds weird to a native speaker's ears. But how do you learn collocations? The only way is through context. You have to be exposed to them and get your ear used to hearing certain words grouped together. Songs can help you do this because lyrics are often made up of common phrases and word groupings that natives use in their day-to-day -day conversations. Reason number eight, natural grammar. When you speak your native language, you don't analyze grammar rules in your head, do you? So why does it make sense to learn Chinese grammar by memorizing a bunch of esoteric rules? Instead, you can pick up grammar more naturally by simply listening to music, noticing lyrics, and seeing how singers put words together in a way that makes grammatical sense. Reason number nine, stories. Next to music, stories are the most intrinsically motivating content for human beings. Just think about how much money movies and novels make compared to how much money lectures and textbooks make. Point made. Now, the thing about Chinese music, especially popular Chinese music, is that a lot of the songs are tied to stories. Either the songs themselves tell a story, think J. Chow's Ting Mama De Hua, which is kind of about the story of his childhood, or the songs refer to stories. They are the soundtrack to a movie or a drama, like GM's Guangnian Zhi Wai which is tied to the 2016 movie Passengers. Sometimes when you're looking up songs, you will find the stories that they're connected to and start watching them and maybe get hooked. And many hours later, after binge watching whatever story you stumbled on, you will be that much better at Chinese than you thought possible. Reason number 10, emotional context. Emotions are what help us to remember things. Your brain is a fantastic machine. It keeps the things that it thinks is important and trashes all the rest. If you want to remember Chinese words and phrases and sentences then, you have to somehow let your brain know that this is important. But it's hard to do that as a language learner if you don't have real life experiences with the language. For example, if someone laughs at you and makes you feel bad about not knowing a certain word, you can bet you'll remember that word in the future. The problem is you can't manufacture emotional experiences for every word you want to learn on demand. Or can you? Well, to some degree you can, if you use music. Music is inherently emotional. You can listen to most songs and tell at once whether they're happy or sad, angry or sweet, nostalgic or creepy, even if the singer is singing a language you don't understand. In summary, the best way to learn a language is to use it in daily life and have emotional experiences with the different vocabulary that you're trying to learn. And the second best way is to sing your way to language success. Reason number 11, conversational topics. The end goal of most language learners is to eventually be able to talk to a native speaker. But what exactly do you want to talk to them about? Maybe you have a specific goal like chatting with your business partners about business stuff. But even then, you need to have some small talk skills in your back pocket for times when you're not talking business. And here, music can be a great topic to chat about. If you know something about popular songs and songwriters old and new, you'll be that much more likely to impress your native speaker friends and have interesting stuff to contribute to any conversation. Reason number 12, 
Culture. Music is an essential part of culture. Any culture. Scottish politician Andrew Fletcher once said, "Let me make the songs of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws." In other words, music has a powerful impact on societies and on people's worldviews. If you really want to learn a language, you probably need to understand the people who use that language. And if you really want to understand the soul of a people, listen to their songs. The melodies they use, the topics they sing about, the way they describe their feelings—all of that will help you better understand the language you are learning and the people who speak that language. Reason number thirteen: supplemental resources. So let's say you find a Chinese movie or book or drama that you're interested in. Only problem is you're not sure how to access it. Maybe it's not available in your country, or maybe the language is too advanced for you, and you have no idea what's going on, and they don't have subtitles. Sometimes there are kindly bloggers and vloggers who'll do some drama summaries or subtitles or movie reviews online for fun, or there will be some book translators who will kindly translate some monster novels like. The three body problem, so that they are accessible to those who are not quite at that language level yet. But these people are few and far between, and often leave out the juicy details. When it comes to music, however, especially popular songs, you can easily find lyrics and lyric translations and explanations all over the internet. There are blogs and sites and forums and YouTube channels galore that share lyrics and explain what they mean. <clears throat> Sing in their Chinese. <clears throat> so, if A certain song uses words that are beyond your current level. With just a little bit of digging online, you'll probably find whatever you want to learn easily. All right, let's talk about our bonus: introducing vocab songs. Remember how I said at the beginning of this video that emotions are what help us remember things, and that one way to create emotional experiences is through music. Problem is, most Chinese songs aren't designed to help you learn vocabulary. Plus. A lot of songs are really long, and they have so many words that it can get a little difficult to focus on any one particular word. So, I've done something about that. Here at Sing and Learn Chinese, we've created a list of 1,000 most common Chinese words to get you started on your vocab learning journey. And we're also creating super short, super easy, super catchy little songs based on these 1,000 common words. To learn more, check out singandlearnchinese.com/welcome to get access to the word list and to get the latest updates on our Chinese vocab songs project. Alrighty, now you know the 13 reasons why you can and totally should learn Chinese using music. But no matter what methods you use to learn Chinese, remember to have fun and enjoy the journey. Until we sing again, 再见。